notes for chapter 9. This is section 1. These are about Gregor Mendel and his experiments on pea plants. So after this slideshow you should be able to describe the three different generations, P, F1, and F2, from Mendel's experiments and the three conclusions that he made about these experiments. Gregor Mendel is considered the father of genetics because he's the first person to track a trait through several generations. He looked at several different traits of pea plants. They're listed here and he picked a particular trait and then bred them together and followed it through several generations. Here's a graphic of the different traits and what they looked like. So in order to talk about breeding peas, you need to know the difference between self-pollination and cross-pollination. Self-pollination should be pretty self-evident. Here's the definition from your book. Pretty much, a plant pollinates itself. In cross-pollination, one plant will pollinate another plant. I know you're not remembering from middle school what the anthers and stigmas are on the flowers, so here's a graphic. The stigma is here, and the stigma is sticky. The anther is where the pollen is produced, and are these brown, kind of upside down slipper looking things. The pollen is passed by butterflies, bees, wind, and it gets on the stigma. The pollen travels down into the ovary where the egg is located. Once the egg is fertilized by the pollen, a seed will result and the ovary will turn into the fruit. Alright, a little bit about Mendel's method. How did he know which plant pollinated which plant? He actually went in and removed the anthers from every flower of every plant. And not only did he remove all of the anthers where the pollen is made, he kept track of which anthers came from which plants. He would then take a paintbrush or something similar and pollinate each flower individually by hand so that he knew there was no chance that a bee or wind or a butterfly could pollinate plants with pollen he did not intend. To start his experiments, he had to develop the pea generation, and this is the parent. Um, the important thing to know about the pea generation is that they were true breeding for a specific trait. The example your book uses is here. So true breeding purple flowers always produce purple flowers. True breeding white flowers always produce white flowers. So he bred the purple flower and the white flower together. The first generation of seeds is called the F1 generation. The F stands for filial, which is kind of like family. So the first generation. The F1 generation tells us which trait is dominant and which trait is recessive. So here's the graphic from your book. The pea generation purple plants were bred with the pea generation white flowered plants. They cross pollinated and all of the F1 generation were purple, which means the purple trait is dominant. He took those F1, let's go back, he took the F1 generation and self pollinated them. So these flowers self pollinated and the seeds that resulted are the F2 generation. This is the important part here, the offspring of the F1 generation. The F2 generation tells us that a recessive trait is still in the genes, that it really didn't disappear, that it's not gone. Here's the graphic of the second generation, the F2. So here we have our F1 generation. They were all purple. In our F2 generation, we have some that are white. If you look down here, at the numbers of plants Mendel was working with. You can see there were 705 plants with purple flowers, 224 plants with white flowers. 
this is about a 3 to 1 ratio. This graphic is in your book and actually includes all the traits, not just these four. But you can see the parent generation, the true breeding, tall and short, the F1 generation, they all show the dominant characteristic. In the F2 generation, it gives you his data for the dominant trait on top and the recessive trait on the bottom. The ratio that he observed that he calculated was about 3 to 1 for every trait. So a predicted ratio for a cross between a homozygous dominant and a homozygous recessive individual is always 3 to 1. So what were Mendel's conclusions from all this data? The law of factors. Mendel determined that an allele exists for each characteristic. One is dominant and one is recessive. He didn't know that they were alleles. He called them factors at the time. The second of Mendel's conclusion is the law of segregation. And this states that the alleles are separated when the gametes are formed. That he's talking about meiosis here, even though he didn't know it. And when he says each allele on homologous chromosomes, he's actually talking about that tetrad that is formed during prophase one of meiosis. The law of independent assortment states that the characteristics themselves, such as seed color and flower color, separate independently during meiosis. This means, in human terms, that just because you have blue eyes doesn't mean that you must have blonde hair. Those traits are independent of each other. One way to remember this is that the law of segregation is talking about the actual alleles. So, in human terms, brown eyes or blue eyes. The law of independent assortment is talking about characteristics such as eye color and hair color. And eye color and hair color do not depend on each other. And that's it for these notes.